Let me drink first. <laughs> Cheers. To the Cube is over party. Yeah, fuck you, Cube. To all of Cube's artists leaving Cube and finding a better company. Yay. Run by Kiana. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> And welcome to a special edition of Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon, and I'm here with my co-host, Angelica, and we're pretty steamed, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're here for an emergency edition. And sorry that it's kind of a late. I know, like, you guys were banging for this days ago, but yeah. I was... The timing was bad. The timing of everything was very bad. I was like on a plane yeah. and then the t oh, the time difference. But it's okay. We're here now. So what we're going to do today, because I think it will be like important for historical record A and B, we just like need, need to, to get this out. This. <laughs> but we are going to give what we have tried to make as a definitive timeline of everything that's been happening at Cube surrounding Pentagon and Hyuna in the last couple of months get through all of the facts as we have them mm -hmm. and then we're probably just gonna yell about it for a little bit so <laughs> so here we go so i hope that y'all are ready for that yeah um okay so i guess we should just like start going the beginning. through this timeline so i started kind of early just because i wanted to in Set the, the scene. Especially in the case of Yena and I wanted to like have, yeah, like have an idea of where we were starting with. So like May 13th is the final stages of Shine. Okay. And May 23rd, Yenan goes and records the first episode of this show that we're going to call CYZJ. Mm-hmm. Because that's about as much as I. Yeah. Wait, I, you have that as May 23rd? Yes. What did you say was the last, was the last Shine stage? The 13th. Oh, okay. He probably just went there earlier because May 23rd is the day that they filmed the stage. Oh, okay. Which means they actually started recording it around May 19th. Okay, so we might have left immediately. Okay. Yeah. The dates around the show are difficult. I'm yes. warning you now we've done as much research as possible, but this show, um, in part because it doesn't really have an English title, it's like kind of called The Collaboration, but that doesn't really – it doesn't really translate um, – but also just because, like, it's a Chinese show. There's just not that much about it. I couldn't right. find it. But, but thanks to uh, CYZJ Subs, yes. um, which is, like, a team of people who subbed this. And they they have, like, a YouTube playlist. And that's where I was watching the show because they've dutifully and carefully and thoughtfully subbed every single episode. <laughs> it's incredible. Thanks, um, y'all. But I also reached out to them on Twitter to try and see if they could give me, like, a timeline of when the show was actually recorded um almost with the exception of the live finale um every episode was aired about a week after it was recorded mm -hmm. um but the recording started as best as they could tell me so they're kind of rough estimates um, right. may 19th until the live finale aired on uh september 13th okay so that's the timeline that we're dealing with all right so that's when he started may mid-may mm -hmm. on that show um June 20th is when there were first rumors of a Japanese version of Shine being filmed. Um, and that video has all 10 members in it. And we think okay. it was probably filmed around June 20th. <gasps> oh, I wonder if that's... Okay, I don't want to get like a... Keep going. Okay. So, uh, three days after these rumors, like I couldn't confirm when they filmed it. That's just when there were like okay. tweets of like, someone saw someone. Like, so who knows? Okay. We're doing our best. <laughs> possibly on the 20th. So possibly on the 20th, they were, or right before then, they were filming the Japanese version of Shine, all 10 of okay. them, all 10 pentagons. That time overlaps with one of the recording sessions okay. of the Chinese show. Because the fifth episode, which Yanan is on, mm -hmm. was recorded around the 20th to the 24th. Okay, because the 23rd, he was not at KCON. Because of CYCJ. No, you're, that's – I'm talking about June. Oh, I'm – So talking about Yeah, I know. KCON New York. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, uh, KCON LA was not in June. No, no, no. <laughs> KCON New okay, York okay, was. Okay, okay. Yanon did not come because okay. he, was he was filming this. Okay. 
Now, here's our first big, huge question mark on the timeline. July 10th? Mm-hmm. Yanon is hospitalized. Yes. Around this point, mm-hmm. he tearfully Ugh. left his show. It's the worst. It's awful. So it's um, episode six of this CYZJ show when, um, so June and Yanon, June of 17, partner with Yanon um, to do like a collaboration stage. They're both really cute and like very excited to work with each other. Maybe they're dating. This is my goal. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, so, like, halfway through this episode, they, they are performing their stage, and then Yanan has, like, a very tearful, like, confession and apology to June where he says that he's, like, felt like he's been a burden to everybody and he can't go on. He, like, needs to take time for his health. They never specify what his health problems are um, in the way that that conversation happened and also based on like other conversations from the show that Yanon's had with like Ming Hao about how hard it is for him to make friends and stuff I want to say it seems like they're mental health issues Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like he suffers from maybe like depression um, definitely anxiety oh yeah Um, he's an anxious anxious insecure little bub and I worry about him Mm -hmm. all the time (laughs) and so and I think he was like over my worry is that he was maybe overworked. And the mm-hmm. reason I say this is because the epi- – so he leaves in episode six, which was recorded between July 9th and July 13th, right? So, like, on July 13th, the day they recorded their live stage, he wasn't there, right? So right. So we think he a little left before around then. the 10th. Sure. But – that Japanese video was supposedly filmed around the 20th, which is at the same time as the previous episode, episode five, which Yanon is in, right? So that episode oh, was, was the filmed 20th June 20th of- yes. to June 24th. Okay. So if he, I'm worried that like he had to do both this show and this music video flying back and forth between China and Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's worried about being a burden for both his partner on this show right. and also his members who he like maybe feels should should be the priority and then he gets like n- worries himself into like an anxious wreck yeah which of course has physical side effects of yeah. all different kinds and so then july 10th he has to he has to leave okay so that's a theory as to why he's right 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 right. the whole point of that know. was just to say like we don't really know why he was hospitalized our guess is that it happened around the 10th of yes. july july 18th triple h retro future comeback starts okay July 29th, or or maybe your dates will be different, Yanon is back on his show mm-hmm. by the 29th. Yes. The okay. 29th, he's back. Okay. Then July 30th is when the first, like, articles of from netizens, uh, like, accusing Yana of sexual harassment for touching the boys too much, being oh, too right. sexual. It's, like, all over the internet, and people have, like, a million gifs and whatever, and they're just, like, freaking out. Cube says nothing about this. <laughs> like, nothing. Just want to, like, reiterate from the future, that was a mistake. Yeah. So that was – so that's that's starting July 30th. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I'm just going to make – in a moment, we're going to get into our opinions, and I just need to make, need a, to make note a note <laughs> of the fact that that happened. Um, hold on. Hold, please. <laughs> What was the date of that again? Uh, July 30th. Okay. Continue. Okay. The next thing I have, I guess this isn't, this isn't like an, an event. I just like had it written down that on, on August 2nd, Yanon is still filming. He's back on the show. There's nothing. He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. August 2nd is the day that they uh, recorded in front of an audience. Okay. And it's a great performance. I highly recommend it. All right. It is good. It's very, very good. Okay. 8, 3, August 3rd. This is the day. Mm -hmm. I have pages and pages of shit from this day. So here we go. August 3rd was crazy. Uh, The first thing, there's a magazine called TV Report. They put out their big morning paper claims that Hyuna and Edon have been dating for several months and they have evidence from a joint birthday party that they threw. Their birthdays are like a couple days apart. So they like Adorable. had a joint birthday party. <laughs> and this this tabloid, I guess, had pictures of it. And that was like okay. their proof. And they were like, we're going to take them down. Within 15 minutes of this article being posted, Cube responds with the one sentence, Hyuna and Edon are not dating. This is groundless. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so bold we're statement? starting out very bold. Um, yeah. We'll get back to it. But first and biggest mistake. Put that in. Write that. Write that. <laughs> biggest mistake. Okay. Then a few hours later, like this was the longest day. <laughs> Pictures of Hui and G Idol Sujin start circulating online. They're like on a date at the mall. Mm -hmm. Then there are pictures of Yuto and CLC's Yoon. Mm -hmm. uh, netizens in the comments of these are of these pictures coming out say they have also seen Wu Sook out with CLC's Sungyeon in the same mall. Which then drags up old rumors about Shin Wan and CLC's Yoonbin because they, like, had had rumors previously because she had pictures of him on her Instagram or whatever. And people were like, oh, this is proof that everyone at Cube is dating. So it was all just, like, mm -hmm. coming out. Cube makes a statement. Specifically everyone in Pentagon. Yes, and three members of CLC and a baby G idol who'd been debuted for two months. Uh, okay. Uh Cube puts out a statement that they've consulted Hui and Sujin and they already broke up. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Here's when everything really goes to hell. Uh, Hyana gives a statement to Yonhap News and shares it on her Instagram. And I am going to read This that is still statement. the same day, right? This is still the same day. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah. Just clarifying. For those oh. of us listening at home, <laughs> keeping up and not taking notes. Okay. Uh, here is uh, Hyanna's statement. We've been going out with each other for two years. We knew this would result in some kind of labeling, but we thought it would be hard to look straight into the eyes of our fans without being honest. So we decided to be honest with our loving and supporting fans and come on stage with confidence. We started dating in May 2016 after I got to know Edon when he was a trainee. We entered the relationship as we worked together for music pieces. Uh, we've been talking a lot about music and started com to compose songs together. Although he doesn't appear in all the credits of my albums, Edon has been very helpful with all of the details. What we decided together is that we be honest for people who have been supportive. I also want to make my utmost efforts on stage so that I can be responsible for our decision. Um, Edon added, I was sorry for any influence that this could have on our team, so I told the other members about this. I'm sorry for our fans, but I will make this up by putting more efforts into our music performances. Um, and then Hyanna posted it on her Instagram and added, I really wanted to be honest for the fans who always support me and watch over me. I want to walk, work hard on stage with a happy heart with nothing to hide, as I always have. Thank you. And even though it's not enough to just say I love you, I have no other way of expressing it. So there we go. Mm -hmm. It's out from her own mouth. Then, <laughs> at night, Cube puts out their final statement of the day, which reads, <clears throat> First, we want to apologize to the many fans who have been hurt. There was a miscommunication while looking into the dating rumors between Edon and Hyanna that was reported, which led to incorrect information being published, and for that we sincerely apologize. We would be grateful if people watched over the relationship with these two honest people with warmth and affection. Regarding the dating rumors between Hui and Sujin that were reported on August 3rd, we have confirmed the facts and they are as reported through our official statement earlier today. Also, Yoon and Yuto are simply close friends and colleagues who have been friends before their debut, as both are rappers in their respective groups. Cube Entertainment artists maintain a friendly relationship from their time as trainees, and they will always fully support each other as close colleagues. We ask that no more speculations or misunderstandings be made about our artists. We sincerely apologize for causing concern to all the fans who love Cube Entertainment artists. Thank you. That one's not so bad. It's not so bad, but it's the f it should have gone out first. It, like it should have, <laughs> and we're maybe we should save this rant for later. Okay. But that initial statement is ultimately supportive of Hyanna and Edon's mm -hmm. relationship because it's saying we hope you will support these loving and honest yeah. artists. Okay, let's just point out that that's what they said, and then move on. Yes. So that was the third. A uh, couple days of chaos, I guess. And then on the 7th, that's when Cube puts out the statement that Edon and Yanon are not coming to the Unibirthday. Okay. Um, 
And people assumed that, I remember that people were assuming that either Yenon had gotten sick again or he just could not travel because of the show and the, like, back and forth. That was back on and forth. August 7th. 7th. He was not filming the show at that time. There is literally no reason why he wouldn't have been there. Okay. He was not sick. And that... So the show recorded from July 29th to August 2nd. Um, artists usually stayed a couple days afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, like, he would have been filming the show from July 29th to about August 5th. And then uh, not again until August 20th. Okay. So unless he just, like, couldn't get a flight out. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's my fir- that's our first piece of shady business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless we want to give Cube the benefit of the doubt and say that they were like, hey, you just recently were hospitalized. Maybe you should take it easy and, like, stay in China. Not but funny. I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> not right so. now. Next. Uh, next day, there's another statement that Edon will not be participating in the Japanese comeback. That was the 8th? That was the 8th. Um, that's when I was, like, pretty sure that he wouldn't be at KCON. I was like, God damn it. Mm-hmm. Oh, because they also, I didn't have this on here, but they immediately canceled all of Triple H's comeback promotions on the 4th. Right, because when uh, Hyuna made that statement, it was before their, they had one more stage of Retro Future, didn't they? They had, like, one or two. It was, like, their last week of promotions, but they'd only done, like, one recording for the week because it was, like, Thursday. Yeah. So they hadn't done the rest of the weekend. But, yeah, they halted their comeback um, and canceled, like, a fan sign. I just forgot that that was in there. Okay. Then the 10th is the Unibirthday event. Edon is not there. Yenon is not there. Edon has been removed from the VCRs. Yenon's in the VCRs. They they didn't cut him out. Um, Then the 11th, KCON LA, eight members of Pentagon are there. Um, this, this is something I wrote into the timeline just like for my own sake, because it felt important to me. So between like, I'll have to go back, but between August 14th and August 29th, Hyanna's Instagram is like being updated with captionless photo shoot pictures and like official videos, like photo shoot videos from like magazines or whatever. Like, okay. They're not her. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, not personal. Yes. It's it like was like very, very promotional. And all the comments are like, Cube, stop upgrading. Like, stop posting on our Instagram. Like, we want Yana. Mm-hmm. So that just like, I had to note that because it was, it, it was po- important. Right. So for like. Something was going on behind the scenes where she no longer had. It seemed like she had no control, control of her Instagram. <laughs> okay. On the 22nd of August, this was a sad day because they released that shine video and there all 10 of them were and it was so beautiful and like i had an hour with that video that morning and then cube put out their statement that pentagon would promote as eight indefinitely um not addressing why yenon was not coming back yeah this is the full statement hello this is cube entertainment this note is to inform you about pentagon members edon and yenon's future activities edon is temporarily halting activities Due to health reasons, Yenon is going to focus on treatment and receiving adequate rest instead of activities. We express our apologies to the many fans who care about Pentagon. Pentagon will continue promotions as a group of eight without Edon and Yenon. Thank you. Um, the that next, was on what day? The 22nd. Okay. So the next day is when Yenon posts on his Weibo, which is like Chinese social media, um, apologizing that he's not going to participate. Mm-hmm. Because he has health issues and, like, please. But he says to watch the show because it's, like. Yes. Yeah. So he, um, yeah, he posts that he has struggled with health issues since his debut. Um, he, again, apologizes for being a burden not only to Cube and Pentagon but also to, like, June and um, the crew of the Chinese show mm-hmm. he was on. Um, and then he says that he has a stage that night, right? So, like, the previous episode that he'd filmed from July 29th to August 2nd aired on, like, the 23rd of August. During that same time, he was filming the ninth episode, which is his last episode, and he leaves that – he leaves the show halfway through that episode with 
zero explanation okay or acknowledgement yes and then on the like finale or on the episode that airs june says june gives up his spot in the final episode yeah so this is where the timeline gets kind of iffy because so like like i said the um these episodes aired later than they were f- recorded right? right so the episode that Yanan references on August 23rd was filmed between July 29th and August 2nd. Mm -hmm. And then in the ninth episode, which is the following episode, um, he, that was filmed August 20th to August 24th. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that he left around like the 21st or the 22nd. Okay. Because in that show, so they recorded for Every episode was recorded over, like, five days, right? And so the beginning of the show, Yanan and June are in the final three. So they have to prepare this, like, one last performance with a musician that plays, like, a traditional Chinese instrument. So then it shows Yanan and June, like, on the first day of recording, immediately going and, like, choosing the artists that they want to collaborate with. And then... They never show any of the preparation for that performance. They move on to, like, other teams that needed to perform in order to get into the top three. Mm -hmm. So it, like, moves on to a different part of the competition. And then toward the end of the show, like, right before um, they announce who will be the last team in the top three. This was on August 24th. Okay. June from 17 interrupts the results because it's either going to be like Ming Hao's team that will be eliminated or like the other team that has people I don't know in it. Um, so June interrupts before they can eliminate a team and he explains that uh, Yanan might not be able to come back because of his health. Um, and so he decides that he will bow out of the competition in order to allow both of the remaining teams to continue to perform um, or continue to compete with the caveat that he be allowed to actually perform the stage that he and Yanan prepared. And he wants to do it like in honor of the work that they did in preparing it and also for his buddy Yanan. My heart hurts so who he much. Says, <laughs> quote, who I hope will quickly come back. So it wasn't even like a confirmation that he wouldn't come back before right. the end of the show because the show continued to record and air until September 14th. So maybe they thought at some point he'd come back because then June was like the MC for the finale. So maybe he was like, oh, Yanan can come back and like MC with me or something. Yeah. But Yanan never does. He do, He's not in the, the 10th episode at all. Okay. Which hasn't been subbed yet, but I scrubbed through it anyway just to see just if to his face sure. was in it and it is not. Okay. Good. Thank you for yeah. this work. Tears were shed <laughs> by everyone on the stage and also in the audience and also on my couch. Oh, <laughs> so it was a really upsetting episode. Okay. So now August 30th, uh, Hyanna posts on Instagram. She posts like a picture of her fans like logo and she just like apologizes because all of her – like she was supposed to perform at some like festivals and shit and they like canceled all of her performances. So she just like – wrote a message to her fans like I'm so sorry like I'm sorry that you're worrying like don't be sick mm-hmm. like just be well we'll see, I'll see you as soon as I can yeah um then on the 4th of September Hyuna posts a very melancholy video of her with a record player and fixing her hair it's very melancholy but it's her it was her yeah so it was and like that back in control of her own Instagram. Yes. Sad, it, but in control. But it like, I, it was her. Um, and then on the 5th, I wrote fully back on her Instagram bullshit. Um, she like posted these pictures of her like kicking a wall <laughs> that are the best. Um, and they were ta- obviously taken like very late at night, like in her classic Kiana style. We all hoped that like Hyo Jong took the pictures, like that they'd snuck out in the middle of the night and were like having fun. And I just like the... I feel like in this whole saga, those couple of days where she was back on her Instagram bullshit were when I felt the calmest. Yeah. Because, like, it felt very normal. Mm -hmm. And I had, like, written out this, like, nice Korean comment that said, like, Hyuna, are you okay? Like, you know I'm always cheering for you, right? Like, please be happy forever. I love you so much. And then, like, in in Korean, and like, a bunch of purple hearts. And I was posting it on all of her pictures. And it, like, felt – it just, like, felt normal. Yeah. Then, (laughs) okay, here we go. This is one of the worst parts, at least 
it, it, to me. So on, I got to pull the letter up. On the 7th of -hmm. September, Edon finally posts in the fan cafe, the Pentagon fan cafe. And this is a translation of his letter. Hello, everyone. This is Edon. I'm sorry that I'm writing this so late and out of the blue after so long. I really wanted to be there at the start of our fan club during August and as well as be with my members to whom I'm very thankful, but I couldn't attend that. While being very truthful and honest with my feelings on stage, a lot of fans were taken back by that, so I apologize that it happened. I know this is very late and people won't have their hearts open to accept this, but if your feelings are still a little bit there, I hope that this touches you. I talked a lot with my members before making a decision, and I thought about it for so long, and I only did it because I thought being honest was so much better than living a lie. It's such a pity that I promise that I will always show a hardworking side of me on stage and always perform, but I couldn't keep that promise now. But I'm very relieved that my members are working so hard and are ready to give you great music during this upcoming promotion. I wouldn't be able to promote, but I worked hard on the album and I sincerely hope that the fans will support it. I don't know when we will meet again, but until then, don't get sick and I hope everything goes well for all of us. I'm sorry. Thank you. I miss you. I'll update you about me whenever I get the chance to. (sighs) I hate that letter so much. Okay. (laughs) So that was bad. That felt bad and it didn't look good. Um, September 10th, Pentagon drops, Naughty Boy, music video promotions begin question yes um have you listened to this did the full, the full album is out right yes have you listened to it yes is edon's voice on it no hmm. okay yeah um okay uh on i know mm, I, I know i know it. it's hot. we're very close to the end of the timeline <laughs> okay. and we'll get and we'll get there okay um also on the 10th like I said, for a couple, the last five days, Kiana's been back on her Instagram bullshit. So it's the, it's the morning of the tenth. She posts her outfit of the day, like she always does, and then she posts a melon screen cap of the new Pentagon song mm-hmm. with like, I don't even think there. No, it didn't even have a caption. She just like posted it, which she has done for all of their comebacks since they debuted as a group. Of course, but this time there are like five like. Hundreds of thousands of comments on this Instagram post of people just going ape shit. Like S- being mad? Yes. Furious. This is all your fault. So how could you, how dare you? Okay. <laughs> so that was the 10th. Um, then 9-13, September 13th, 11-30. Okay, this is another really long cube day. Uh, 9.13, 11.38 a.m., Cube releases an official statement to the press. This is the statement. Cube Entertainment has decided to remove Hyanna and Edon from the company. When managing our artists, the company has worked with faith and trust in each other as the main priority. After much discussion, the judgment was made that it is not possible to recover the faith with these two artists, so their removal has been decided. We sincerely thank the two artists and their fans who have been with us until now. 12.45 12.45 p.m., hour 15 minutes later, some Cube executives or like shareholders, some kind of anonymous guys who have a lot of stake in the company come forward and say, although Cube Entertainment announced the departure of Hyanna and Edon, top-level executives say this decision is not final. The dismissal of Hyanna and Edon was in discussion, but it is not final. We have to collect opinions a little more. Then... 45 minutes later, another official Cube statement. The departure of Hyanna and Edon is confirmed. There is no turning back. But that was an official statement. Uh, all of, like, that was another official Cube statement. Yes, yes, Well, but yes. the one yeah, that the, said that it was, an, like, ta- that said it wasn't final was, like, an anonymous leak. It was, like, a, it was, it was, like, a bunch of shareholders or executives, like, coming forward to the press. Like, we executives of Cube Entertainment But it are wasn't saying, necessarily it an wasn't official from their statement. Press. Okay. <laughs> Just whatever. wanted to clarify. So then at 7.30 p.m., the Cube CEO states that the matter is not final and a meeting will be held next week. Okay. Then about three days after that, um, Hyanna's staff is posting vague things on Instagram. 
Not a bit like barely. Her manager, who's been her manager for 11 years and is like her best friend, took Cube Entertainment out of the little out of her little bio on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like it used to, you know, say like, mom, whatever. Cube Entertainment. Now that's gone. And then one of Hyuna's stylists in their Insta story show, have posted a picture of an AOMG business card. And that's Jay Park's label. And that's it was contextless but people were like oh does that mean they like had a meeting there or is the stylist just trying to get work or is this a hint or whatever and here we are it's september 23rd and fucking nothing has happened there yeah so (laughs) according to like the final uh official statement from cube that said oh we'll address this next week I'm pretty sure they said Friday. They did. Um, So that means they should have said something on the 14th, meaning this past Friday. And nothing has been announced at all. Nothing. And it's Korean Thanksgiving now. So everyone's like off for days. Like, God Mm -hmm. damn it. So we're doing this now. We're putting it out. (laughs) Today, the su- Sunday, instead of our regular Wednesday, because we do- didn't want to get, like, caught in yeah, a timeline just... where, like, on Tuesday they announce something and that makes this episode we're recording right now out of date. Yes, so, exactly. fuck so... you, Cube, for <laughs> messing everything up in multiple ways. Ugh, seriously? Like, I just, like, have to say, like, I'm sorry. Like, the reason that this episode is so weird and late, I just have to talk about how I experienced Go for this. It. So, on... Like, because I guess I feel like we accidentally have made ourselves, like, the the definitive place to talk about this stuff. Like, <laughs> I, I let all of my shipper fangirl out of the bag. And, like, now that I have to be responsible for this, which is kind of funny. So, it's anyway. Fine. That's what we wanted. We wanted people to ask us about K-pop. Yeah. The name of our It's shit. true. So, on the, like, on the 12th, on the 11th, like, you came over and I, like, made you watch Naughty Boy, like, with me because I was, like, having too many feelings. Yep. And, like, mm-hmm. I just, it's hard for me. And then, so I was going to London and when I was getting ready to go on the plane, I, like, often wear and bring K-pop things with me when I fly because it, like... Comforts you. Yes. So I put my Hyuna and Edon shirt on. I always on. wear my Mino and Timmy necklaces when I fly. Yeah. Literally always. I have to have Mino socks on when I fly. He needs. Mm-hmm. So I added my Hyuna and Edon shirt. I was just like, I feel like they need me today and I need to take them with me to London. So I just like put that shirt on, which is so funny. And then I was in the sky for 12 hours in relative bliss. Not really. I hate flying, but I didn't know anything. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, I, on the ground, I had nothing to do and no one to talk to, so I just <laughs> shouted into the void. I was verklempt. Yeah. Like, I, I went through such a roller coaster of emotions. So I think it's apparent in the Twitter quickly. thread, like how you were, how it was going for yeah. you. I went from like rage to shock to sadness to logic. Like, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. all over the place. So I land in London, Ugh. I turn my phone on, and it starts blowing up. <laughs> and I will admit, I had like a tiny bit of panic because the first thing I saw was a message from you that was like, I hate, I'm so sorry you're in the sky. Like, I hate that I have to send you this. Like, something terrible has happened. And last time you texted me like that, it was really, really bad. So I was like, I was preparing for something horrible. Yeah. And in my like and not I, having I slept, do apologize. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but something terrible did it happen. It did. But in my like state of being awake for 26 hours and like hating flying and like just literally everything of it, about it, I like saw that headline and my only thought was good. Good. Yeah. And then as the like hours went on, I I also went through my roller coaster. But my initial thought was like, good, get away. Like they don't like you yeah. anyway. Which like, is definitely like I feel you. Like I felt that way too. There was definitely a part of me that was like, good riddance. Like Cube, you don't deserve Hyanna or Edon, and like they both deserve so much better than you. And then kind of in the like like as the dust settled of that initial like drop. Yeah. Then you, I started thinking about all of the members of Pentagon and like all of the people that this affects. Uh huh. And that was where it really started to make me sad and upset because, like, Pentagon has been through so much bullshit already just in the formation of the group itself. Like, Pentagon Maker was weirdly and unnecessarily sadistic in the way that they, like, eliminated people. And then, ha-ha, surprise, just kidding, everybody can be on this in this group. And it was like – 
So it was already upsetting. They've already been through a lot of like, oh, can we be all together? No, we can't. Yes, we can. I don't know. And then to just like rip two of the members out. It just, it was. Upsetting. No, it's a lot. And I, okay, we're going to be all over the place. So we should just like, let's, let's settle in that for a moment. A come what how how do we feel about like co- like comebacks with missing members and how that like never feels nice mm-hmm. but sometimes it's like <clears throat> understandable but like again like we talked about in our shiny episode shiny did a Jong Yoon list comeback once yes. it's my least favorite shiny song and like it is and it's and just weird. it does make like those f- subsequent performances like kind of weird whenever they did that song but. And, like, uh, EXID we talked about, like, they just had a recent comeback that has been – or they've had a few comebacks yeah. that only have four of the members. But those were due to injury and illness, right? Yeah. So I think like, it's more understandable. It sucks, but, like, I kind of hate that people do comebacks with – I feel like – I feel like it, it – a, a concert appearance or a what a tour or whatever if like people are missing from days it's like slightly understandable but like yeah. doing a full comeback where like a whole voice of a member isn't even on it like it bums me out yeah that's that's a bummer like when the voice isn't even there because they like didn't participate in any part of the album like you miss a stage because you broke your arm like obviously uh-huh. you don't want to be on stage but like to not be able to participate in something that is like a piece of your band history. Like, history that sucks that's a huge bummer for I assume the artist but also like as the fan it is very difficult but one thing for me like Yenon is my favorite of uh Pentagon and what has made it particularly difficult is the lack of news about yes. it. Like the fact, obviously this Yana Edan thing was like very controversial and took up a lot of the space in uh-huh. the like news and conversation, which I understand, but it is really unsettling that like nobody ever talks about Yana and, and like nobody asks where he is or like laments the fact that he isn't there. And I'm talking about like universes as well. Like we're, Talking about the fact that, like, oh, like, look, naughty boy, whatever, and people will be like, oh, I miss Edon or something. Nobody asks where Yanon is, and I need to know <laughs> where he is. That was, like, another, like, a problem we had in putting this timeline together because – even the like Pentagon Twitter account wasn't posting like, "Hey, Chinese universes!" Like episode three of the Watch In, like they didn't yeah. even act like the show existed. So there wasn't even a way to find out. Like there was because no think, form of support for Yan on while he was on that Chinese. Because show. if I had had a single like tweet from Cube that was like, "Yanon won't be on the show anymore," like he left this episode, like everyone think nicely of it like i don't know they just didn't even acknowledge it so there's just like so much misinformation and people just like assuming weird things about him and i think i feel like we added it all to the timeline because i just wanted to know because it does it it not that i was trying to be a conspiracy theorist or saying that yanon's illness was fake or anything like that but i will say that it is very bad optics that they kept saying that he was like too sick and then he was on TV in another country. And, yeah. like, yes, it was staggered, and I guess the dates all line up. But, it op- like, it's bad optics for them to just be like, he can't be here because he's sick, but he's somewhere. He, but then, like, right meanwhile, there. oh, there's – but he's on TV literally right now. Like, he's, today he's Here he is on in TV. a magazine spread. Oh, he's in the Pepsi commercial. Like, yeah. he's around. It was very confusing, especially because, like, he even did post a few, like, that cheeky little shit. He posted, mm-hmm. like, a couple things on his Weibo. Like, literally one of the captions was, oh, are you – missing me and, and he has his, like, like a shirt sec, like pulled, thirst like, trappy uh, shirt and i'm just like bitch please <laughs> um but yeah i so just it's just everything about it feels very weird because we just keep it being told like he's sick yeah it was like, like but he's, he's right sick there. but we don't acknowledge the fact that he's on this show at all we're not going to explain why he's on tv and it's just like for me i, I literally i'm gonna read this because i i wrote it down um as i was like upset and needed to document yeah, my ahead. thoughts i wrote but where is yanon did he join his boyfriend june to keep him company on the rest of his world tour did he go back to his hometown in china so he could rest and introduce his family to his boyfriend june <laughs> (laughs) Or did he and his beautiful boyfriend, June, just say fuck it all and run away to a remote romantic getaway? I support all of these options. I just need to know that he's okay and that I am close to – I'm very close to messaging every single member of Seventeen to figure out where he is. Just want to put it out there. I hope he's okay and I hope that he's in love. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
Well, I like that rosy view of it much uh, better. I hope he's with his mom. Yeah. And I, that she's feeding him soup. Jesus. I I want to know where everyone is, and it's like a thing that I've been like worrying about mm. But so I feel like, much. for me at least, I can like comfort myself with the idea that like Hyanna and Edon, like they're still in the same city, and like they're probably still seeing each other every day. Like there's no reason for their relationship to have ended, and I don't think that it no. did in any I'm way. I'm weirdly not worried about them as a couple at no, all. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I'm like mostly <laughs> my fear and worry comes for, for Pentagon. Yeah. Yeah, it's for Pentagon. Yeah, but I'm just like, did they, did they like, has he been treated like he's been fired? Did they kick him out of the dorm? Did mm-hmm. when this happened, did they put him on a train and send him back to his mom? Like, what has is- he been able to communicate with his members at all? Because yeah. the members themselves have not said a word about it, except for Hong Sok. He was at a asked- real men. A press conference. Mm-hmm. He was asked about it, and he gave, like, a very PR-approved statement that was like, Edon has not ta- spoken about this yet, so it's not my place to say anything about it, and just, like, didn't address, which is, I think, a good decision. Like, right. it's not his place to say, but I just also think it's really weird and shitty that, Pen- like, amidst all of this bullshit, Pentagon has just had to, like, been pushed out on stage and give these like super smiley performances and promote them their comeback as though none of this is happening and it seems it makes me feel like I'm being gaslit yes everything about this makes makes me me feel feel crazy like I'm going crazy they're like they're not even not to bring it all the way back to Yanon every single time, but I will. Sorry, get used to it. (laughs) They don't even say like, oh we miss Yanon. We hope he's feeling well. Like that doesn't make any sense. I uh, even even EXO and Lay like they talk about Lay all the time. Yeah, they talk about him all the time. Not enough, but they try. But no, it's very and that's a weird thing. Where's like, Yana? <laughs> and that's like a crazy thing. Like I don't know if this is just like because Pentagon is so new and is like so not as popular as EXO was when they started losing members. But that was a thing we talked about in the contract dispute episode is when people were quitting EXO, members of EXO were posting on their social medias being like, hey man, this is fucked up. Like we knew what they thought. We knew their opinions. (laughs) We knew what their opinions were and we're like, it, it feels shitty and bad and gross to me because it makes me feel like the members of Pentagon are being very tightly controlled. Like, yes. you are not allowed to say anything about this. Like, and I know that a lot of them don't have, like, personal Instagrams and social right. media and stuff. Like, they don't really have right. a, a social media presence. It just feels gross and wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. I totally agree. I totally agree. And Kino cried out a fan sign, like, talking about them. Yeah, and, and I remember uh, you were you telling me that, like, fan accounts from that, like, unibirthday party, like, a lot of the members were really upset. And there was, like, definitely, I thought, kind of, we talked about this in our KCON episode, like, they did not seem as, like, bubbly as they usually do. They are super bubbly in the Naughty Boy stages. Like, the Naughty Boy stages are yeah. great performances. The boys are doing a really good job. It is, like, with a heavy heart that I do like the no, song it's, and, like, I enjoy the performance. Performance. It is just like it's just a little heavy. Yeah, I can. It's very hard for me to like describe how this comeback is making me feel because like I do really like the song and the lyrics that Edon wrote are crushing, mm-hmm. and I love it. But listening to it like fills me with this like very deep melancholy yeah. that I like can't a very cope specific with. kind of sadness. Yes. And what's really so one thing that I have questions about is so Edon obviously like wrote the lyrics to the song. He write he writes the lyrics to a lot of their songs. He admits that he worked on this album. And because we know like how much time artists put into the production of their albums, like the album had to have already been finished by the time they started their promotions, which was on September 10th. Right. And so my question, like, I find it very, very strange that Edon's voice isn't on any of the songs. Right. Because I wonder, like, when they recorded them, did they re-record them in order to take him out of it? Like, it's really weird to me that he's he's credited – as being yeah. like a lyricist or composer of a lot of the songs, and yet 
isn't in any of the recordings, it's really strange. Yeah. That's a red flag. It is. And it's also, like, devastating to think about because, like, Pentagon is self-produced, which means mm -hmm. that, like, they had to drag their asses into a room at Cube and, like, fix the album yep. and delete him off of it. Right. So, like, maybe they That's maybe so... they forced them to do that. Yeah, I I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't like either. it. I but don't I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know when they recorded it, but it seems like I don't know. I don't know cuz everybody was saying like they had to do this comeback now. They had to follow up on Shine. They had to like keep the momentum going. Which but on the one hand, like okay, <laughs> fine. There's a marketing and like capitalistic argument for that, I guess. But I don't know. I feel like their PR has just been wrong and at every turn. About I think the way that this. they handled this comeback was poor. Um, they should have I, given CLC a fucking comeback like everybody asked because they see, treat CLC like dirt. Yes. Yeah, speaking of CLC, let's back up a little <laughs> oh bit. Oh, my God. And those like, girls got can, dragged, too. Can we just back up to, like, the beginning of this timeline? Oh, because, first of all, Fans accuse Hiena of sexual harassment and Cube says fucking nothing about it. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You could have easily immediately squashed it by just being like, Hiena is like a leader, like a leader to all of our groups, literally all of them. Uh -huh. She mentors. So like, of course she's close with them. Like she, they could have just put out a statement. Hiena has a close relationship with all of her like artists uh, or all of the what am I, underways or whatever. Yes. Thank you. All of the rookies and all of the training. Like she is a mentor to them all done. Yeah. Like, and another thing that like we've never brought up on this show before, but I feel like is so important to bring up and like maybe all of you international listeners are like, yeah, duh, that's how things should work. But here in America, we don't have rules like this. Um, companies are allowed to sue people. For mm -hmm. making – for writing shitty comments online. Like, they can literally sue you for that. You can write yeah. – like, they could say that these are like – this is ba – like, what is – The groundless. Libel? What's, oh, or slander. 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 They could say that this is fucking Actually, slander. Actually, I think it's libel because it's printed. But, but you they, know what I mean? Yes. And, and could have stood up for her. Like, truly, they have the and legal idols footing do to do that. so. Chanyeol has sued several fans yes. for saying shit about him on the internet. And he's won. And so, like, they – and to say that she was sexually harassing them. like That's, that's rough. That's a legal accusation. Like, you're accusing her of committing a crime. Cube should have come in right away and put a stop to that. Yeah. Whether they threatened with a lawsuit, actually filed one or just came out and said this is this is groundless like the way that they did with their the first rumors of the relationship like i mean coming out and saying something so definitively like this is groundless first mistake yes. as we already said but also can we please talk about the fact that in one day one two three four five members uh, literally 50 percent of pentagon was exposed for having relationships with other cube artists yes 50 percent of the yes. group. so everyone forgot about this who at pentagon <laughs> screwed at the wrong person or who at cube fucked the wrong person to get this entire group blackmailed yes like something shady has gone on behind the scenes that all of these people got accused accused mm -hmm. cube only acknowledged three of them Mm -hmm. And then Hiana comes out and falls on the sword for everybody. Yes, which is what I, like, will stand by forever because there's a whole lot of people being like, well, the the real mistake is Hiana should, like, that is, that's the ground that everyone's falling on now is that, like, Hiana just should have let Cube lie. Like, she made the mistake for saying something. But to me, because I've talked on the show a million times about how I think she's a fucking genius and that, like, nothing she does is on accident ever, that, like, she – if she is truly, like everyone says, like, the mother of everyone at Cube, then you know, like, hell, she knows everything that's going on. And, like, she knows – Especially if she's been dating one of the members of Pentagon for two years since before they debuted. She knows you, everything. She knows all the members' bullshit. So like, she's – to me, she saw this coming and knew that, like, it needed to be stopped and that, like, only her name would mm -hmm. stop it. 
And so she, like, fucking fell on the sword, like you said. And yeah. And like, told the truth. Because otherwise, like, this could have, because of the way that many fans react to dating rumors and dating scandals, like, this could have easily tainted the reputation and success of three different groups from Cube. G-Idol, CLC, and Pentagon. And so Hyanna, knowing that she had the reputation, that her fans, her fans don't care. No, not like, at all. I, not that's just at what I make all. that very clear. Hyanna fans know that Hyanna can do whatever the fuck she wants as and one, we support her no matter what. As one tweet so like uh, beautifully put it. it is that like all the eyings are fine because mama didn't raise no bitch. Exactly. Meanwhile, <laughs> universes can't handle anything. Can can handle their shit. Yeah. So um uh the P, the I just the PR of it all I just like need to take a moment because I feel like this is one of the most like frustrating things to me and like I know everybody likes to argue that like oh it just the excuse of like it just isn't done that way or this is just how the industry works or whatever like it's so disappointing to me that like Cube didn't use this opportunity after having such a great year to just like fucking go with it Mm-hmm. Be like, yeah, they are dating. Stay tuned, Inky Gaio, tonight. Like, why didn't they yeah. fucking lean into this? Like, no one's done it before, so why didn't you see if it could have worked? Especially considering the <laughs> fact that, like, like, think about the concepts of their groups. Like, sure, Pentagon was kind of a new boy group, sure. and, like, they have more of an innocent vibe. But Triple H is literally built around the concept of a polyamorous couple. Yes. <laughs> like, the concept of this group is that they are a threesome, literally. <laughs> so why I mean, not just into say, it. yeah, they are dating. Make sure you catch their stage. <laughs> just like you said, like, this would have skyrocketed their press and promotion right. and been like sexy group triple h yes like, check them out extra extra like, because you will never ever ever appease teenage fangirls like if you lie they're mad that you're lying if you expose it they're mad that you weren't lying there is no way to win mm -hmm. so trying to cater to those people at all is just so dumb and i'm just like i just I can't imagine, like, the cool world that it could have existed in if they had just, like, tried to roll with it and, like, do something cool instead of, like, pulling them out of the limelight. Because there are other people than teenagers that listen to music. Like, I bet the, there's a lot of cool, like, college students who grew up with Hyuna who would, like, love that shit. I mean, and, like, literally all, as we just said, none of Hyuna's fans were upset. <laughs> yeah. None of us were upset. Yeah. So, like, if they had come out, we I would have bought more of yeah. the album. And the like, international community went crazy. There were people being like, if this was the Philippines, if this was Brazil, they'd be the most famous people in the country. Like, yeah. we even, eat this up. Even think about here in the U.S. Like, Britney and Justin. Britney and Justin. Oh they were celebrated. <laughs> like, give me a fucking And, break. yeah, a lot of 12-year-olds cried. But, like... But also they, a lot cared? of 12-year-olds, like, had that horrible denim picture on their wall. Yeah. You know the Ex one. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know exactly which one you're talking about. But, like, uh, I feel like more almost in the end, more people were devastated when Britney and Justin broke up than they were that they were together. Yes. And then, right? they, like, and then people he supported launched it. his solo career off the back of blaming her for everything. Like, see, mm -hmm. there's art in all of it. Yeah. But, like— uh, uh, about the, the, I had something to say about like the fangirls and how, oh, and initially, like, this is something that the hypocrisy of it all drives me crazy, but like, and I am a fangirl, so I know I can't talk too harshly, but just like the logic sometimes with these things, the like fangirl excuses are really crazy to me. Like, the initial, like, right after the news dropped and all of his fan sites started closing and everyone was like, we're done with him. He hears all the reasons why he's wronged us. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, oh shit, why am I keep losing my train of thought? One of them, no, was about how he. Oh, they were saying that, like, by doing this, he is harming the reputation of the group because now they're losing fans because of him. And it's like, y'all are the fans. You yeah. get to choose. Yeah. And it's you like, get to but, choose. But you're the ones. <laughs> You can't say that he's but you're the ones. He's ruining our reputation by making us mad. Like then, fucking don't be then mad. Don't be mad anymore. 
It's just like the or cyclical like, thinking. Be mad of without l- allowing it to taint the group. Like understand that individual members of a group are not necessarily representative of the group as a whole because it's ten fucking people. So the actions of one cannot possibly taint. And again, the actions and reputations of the ac- of all of them. Back to being mad at Cube and the PR of it all. They didn't fucking do anything wrong. Idols who have committed actual crimes have been supported more by their companies. Yeah. Actual crimes, like assaults like and drunk driving, like breaking doing the law. bad things. They have gotten more support. And I don't know what the fuck is going on with Cube's PR department, but they need to get their shit together because they're literally contradicting themselves. Yes. Like the first statement that came out from Cube after this, oh, no, they're not dating, right? Right. Was – Nice. To ask for the support of the relationship between these, quote, two loving and honest artists, right? Mm-hmm. They specifically called them honest. Yes. And then a few weeks later claimed that they kicked can't. them out because they, trust they cannot trust them for lying, right? Which is like, wait, but they didn't lie. Mm-hmm. You lied. And then the you lied and said that they weren't together. And then the artists came out and said, actually, yes, we are. We don't want to lie to you. Yeah. We can't trust you anymore because you tell the truth too often. Like, yeah. where is it in their contract that specifically says they're not allowed to date? Because if it's not in there, it's not. then fuck all That's of you. That's like a thing is that like there's so many. I don't. I'm, I'm very disappointed that all that so many universes are so willing to defend Cube. It's very weird to me because, uh, like, SM pisses me off all the fucking time, and I won't defend them. And for I shit. feel like fans <laughs> like, tend to side against the companies company, usually. Right? Like, usually, that's why this they comeback do. feels like a manipulation mm-hmm. because it's like if you t- if you spend any time railing against Cube or saying where is Yen and where is Hyojong, people are like, excuse me, there is a comeback happening, and you need to support it. And yes. you're like, not. It's like and they any fucking question. Put it in- any any time anyone asks, like, even if we're not talking about Edon, if it's like, hey, where's Yen on? Is he still sick? Don't talk about yet, and we have eight members that yes. are promoting. And you're like, wait, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but I want to know. Uh, and it's like, don't tell me that I don't care about Pentagon just because I care about Yanan. Yes, the, there's been so many, like, so many flying accusations of people being solo stands and being fake fans and whatever for like asking for not just like happily taking the eight member comeback like it's fine and it feels like everyone's being like hypnotized it doesn't it's make sense weirding me out yeah and it like it calls me so much of this reminds me of EXO because EXO is like the other group I actually follow that has lost has members in like this, this way <laughs> but they're from the beginning and even like now like you're allowed to be an OT12 stan even to this day. Like, oh, if yeah. you still miss all 12 members of EXO, no one's going to no say you're No one's going to judge you. People <laughs> will judge you if you say you're OT8 because you're kicking out a member that's still, that still technically exists. there. Right. Which is why this parallel then of being OT8 for Pentagon of like you must support these guys and if you are OT10 then you're anti-Pentagon it blows my mind and I don't understand. It's very very weird Every, I, I don't Literally know if it's just writing off members that are still technically part of the group. Yeah I don't know if it's just like that it's a new fandom or a young fandom or if I'm just like too old for this shit but it is very it's very odd to me that, like, it feels like nobody wants to, like, deal with. And I get it. No, like, K-pop is an escape, but it's not fun to, like, deal with it when it's no fun. But we live in the <laughs> darkest timeline, so the reality is that, like, we have to deal with yes. the shitty underbelly <laughs> of K-pop. Like, I'm sorry, but if we were living in a nice place, Trump wouldn't be president, Jean Young would be alive, and Pentagon would have ten members. Yeah. Like, There's we need of- to acknowledge the fact that shitty things happen, and you can't just sweep them under the rug. Yeah. I just, like, I want, I don't know why people aren't more mad, and I want them to be more mad, and, but. But uh, righteously uh, angry. The anger is is being directed at the members themselves, and the me- the members didn't do anything wrong! Yeah. It's very, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't Why isn't know. anyone mad at Cube? I don't know, because they, because they told a lie and said they'd have an answer in a couple of days, which, like, I have to bring up because it, like, fell at the same time, and it's just, like, I don't have, I don't have any hope that we're going to hear shit from Cube for a while, because, like, for example, a couple of months ago, 
I won't go into all of this, but basic small headline JYP was accused of like having dealings with a cult and he was like, excuse you, how dare you? I will tell you everything you need to know about this in September. And then last night he put out a statement that like sort of touched on where he, where he said like, I will tell you about this cult accusation in my new book, which will be out next year. By the way, my wife is pregnant. Everyone congratulate me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what he did. <laughs> So I'm sure Cube is just, like, waiting for the perfect way to, like, not have to say anything and then, like, bury it with something else. Like, my thought is, and it's possible, that, like, this isn't this isn't about the dating, but it is about something bigger. Or it was just, my thought is that, like, Hyanna might be, like, swinging her power around mm-hmm. and that's the problem. Because if they started canceling, like, knowing her and everything I know about her, if they started canceling her shit... And they were like, you're not going to, like, they canceled her comeback and they canceled all her performances, which is, like, important to her. It's her, that's her fucking livelihood. And I'm sure she went stomping into a room and, you know, like, you know, I I bet she made demands. Like, you're, I'm coming back by this or I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Or they, or she started openly calling other agencies and they, and someone just, like, didn't like it and was like, we're firing her and her fucking boyfriend too. Or they initially said, like, Edon, you're out because you're essentially a rookie. And, like, if we cut you now, no one will blink. And Hyanna, being the good girlfriend and loving person that she is, came in and said, not without me. Like, he leaves and I I leave. leave. And then now they're backtracking and saying, oh, shit, we can't lose you because you literally make all of our money. Yeah. I mean, there's like a lot of different things that could have gone on. But I think at this point it might be down to, like, very boring business shit. And Mm -hmm. But I also, like, can't shake this idea that there is, like, something crazier happening at Cube that has nothing Mm -hmm. to do with any of these people. No, some kind of, like, corrupt blackmail is going on behind the scenes. And that's a thing that I feel like happens, that seems to happen in, like, the Korean media a lot. And it definitely, like, is the plot of a lot of dramas and has been happening to some celebrities recently is, like... Uh, gambling is illegal in Korea. Like, Koreans are not supposed to gamble. But all these celebrities managed to get themselves in, like, horrible, massive gambling debt somehow. Like, Shu from SES, like, the one of the first girl groups, like, just mm-hmm. had to declare, like, bankruptcy because she, like, spent all her money gambling. Ugh, Jesus. So, like, it's very possible that there's someone at Cube that, like, was laundering money or owes someone a lot of money or gambled away money that wasn't theirs and has now compromised, like, the whole company and everything yeah. is a mess. Maybe they, like, I, sold these dating rumors in order to pay some gambling debts and now they're, like, having to deal with the fallout. I just think, like, I, I don't know. I mean, whatever the, like, twisted reason behind all of this shit in the first place, like, we'll probably never know, and there's very little we can do about it. What The most baffling thing to me is the way that Cube has handled all of this. Yeah. With their contradictory statements and their flip-flopping and their, like, throwing – willingness to throw their own artists under the bus. It's shocking and heartbreaking, and I just truly hope that, like – Hyanna, like I said on Twitter, just sweeps all of these groups away and, like, yeah. takes them to, like, Beast is now Highlight and they're managing themselves. Sholin manages herself. Like, they, it is possible to break out yeah. from underneath this, like, big three thumb. Yeah. And Cube isn't one of the big three, but, like, they're kind of the big four, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they're right under So there. I just hope that they can – Get. I I just don't want them to be a part of it anymore. Yeah, I I I'm very like mixed on what I want or what I think will happen now. Um honestly, like as much like I feel like absolute best case scenario, but it seems absolutely crazy is that like everyone is back, everyone's fine. Hyuna has a comeback, 10 members of Pentagon, we pretend this never happened. It seems mm-hmm. extremely unlikely that that is what we're getting. But if all 10 members came back, I guarantee you they wouldn't address it. Right. They would just say new comeback without and ever never explaining talk about or mentioning it. the fact that maybe we only were We might hear one point. of them mention it seven years from now on in a Life Bar type television show, but mm-hmm. we're never going to hear about it. Yeah. Second scenario, which I'm also kind of don't love, is that they let Hyanna go. And she 
Hyo ends it up and we get perfect pure Hyana, like with no, like as much as she Unfiltered. wants it. <laughs> but then Edon's contract is too long and they keep him, but keep him in the basement and we don't see him anymore. Until his contract, Until his contract runs contract out runs and then out. he debuts with a new group with Hyana. Or like this last choice, which I like better, but it is like ultimately set. Like I don't want Pentagon to lose members, but I don't want him to be treated poorly so i feel really stuck behind like a rock and like it doesn't seem better to me if we can just say on paper that pentagon is 10 people while one of them gets ke- kept in a basement for four mm-hmm. years like that doesn't feel good yeah. either i don't like that so like my ultimate dream is that they both get out and then yeah. he can like because people like a lot of people have been saying like no one's worried about Hyanna and they shouldn't be because she's fine and she will be fine no matter what happens because she is who she is and she's lasted yeah. in this industry for a fucking decade because like, she's a queen. People who know nothing about K-pop, they still know the name Hyanna. Yes. I was literally talking to somebody about K-pop the other day and they didn't – they were like, oh, is that like Hyanna? And I laughed because I was like, you mean Hyanna? But that but was yes. literally the only K-pop name they knew and I was yeah. like, yeah. So she accurate. will be fine. That's accurate. But a lot of people keep saying, I just, like, want to get this out here for the sake of positivity. A lot of people keep saying, like, I don't know about Edon, though. Like, his career is over. And I have to say that I disagree. It's possible that his career as a member of, a, as a member of Pentagon, idol in a boy band, yeah, that might be over. Okay. Yeah. But the But I just don't want anybody to forget that, like, Music exists outside of K-pop in Korea. Mm -hmm. A ton of it does. There are so many people who are very successful and they don't go on Inkigayo and they don't have light sticks and they don't exist in the K-pop world. Totally. I could see him being like a really successful. Featuring on like everybody's like, yeah. Yeah, like Gecko or like Crush or like he could go on this kind of like Zion T route of more like independent music. I could. And honestly, like the way that he and Hyanna collaborate, like we have not seen the end of Edon's no. musical career. By they any are means. each other's muses. They yeah. have said so before. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to keep like that's why I feel like the only possible scenario is that like they are together. Cause like she I don't think she would produce music for Cube if he couldn't like she I feel like they go together yeah. as a musical collaboration mm-hmm. now too. And she wouldn't make an album without him. Yeah. And I think that, like, she would not either – she won't allow him to be kept in the basement no. is my thought. Like, if they won't release him from the contract, I feel like she would threaten to just, like, if you don't release him from the contract, then I quit. Yeah. Right? Or, like, if you fire him, I'm leaving too. Whatever it is, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think that she will do anything in her power to make sure that he's not totally fucked. Yeah. Because um, he's – a genius mm-hmm. and like and he's really young so like i'm sorry i just don't see because again he didn't do anything wrong mm-hmm. idols who have committed actual crimes have come back from them mm-hmm. like he is not he's not done for but i do not have high hopes for pentagon which is why i just kind of want the universe to start fucking living in reality and be sad yeah universe being like the (laughs) the fans sorry that's what i meant but yeah because i don't know like everyone just keeps being like it'll it's fine they'll be 10 again someday and i'm like why do you think that what like i honestly want to know what makes you think that like i'm sorry to be a debbie downer but what makes you think that blind preteen optimism i don't know because like the ignorance of youth because it's like – I feel like it's different from the way that I like think Lei will be an EXO comebacks. It's like a very wispy, tiny – Yeah. I know it's not true and I don't Like you don't get it. your expectations <laughs> up. Like, I just I just hold out for it always like, yeah. oh, maybe. But I don't but know. But also like, <laughs> you know, that small voice that just says, no, don't. No. <laughs> like, don't even don't let yourself this. go there. Oh, boy. Uh this has all just been very difficult. That's that's the whole point is that I just feel really sad and I, I'm just worried. I'm just like worried about everyone and I'm trying to like imagine what everyone's life is like right now and I like get very sad because like in my dream, in like my dream scenario, like all this shit went down and like Hyun and Hyo Jong went to fucking Mexico and they like ignored everybody and like whatever. But they've probably just been like sitting in cold boardrooms and like getting yelled at and like looking at paperwork and 
like, it, I bet all of this is just a goddamn nightmare. Yeah, I'm sure it because is. Because I think – because I was thinking about it too. Like we talked about this con- – our contract dispute episodes or whatever. Like someone at Cube might have announced to the press that they were kicked out. But you can't just like rip a contract in mm-hmm. half. So like they might have said that. But like this could be months and months and months because yeah. like – does One she of, own her name? How mm-hmm. how tight is her contract? What about their writing credits? Like, do they can't get a split forever? Like, mm-hmm. you can't just get rid of people. It's all very tied together. Yeah. I'm sure that there is, like, a certain stipulation in their contract, like, like there are in most employments of, like, the boss has the right to terminate the contract yeah. at any point. But then there is, like, the writing credits, the royalties, like, all of the complications, which is, I'm sure, is why the cu- cube immediately came out and was, like, actually, we're still talking about it because you have to wade through all of that legalese or whatever. And I'm sure that's why we still haven't heard anything yeah. because they – are 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 arbitrating and like having their lawyers talk to each other and whatever to try and figure out what is a solution that they can come yeah. to. And it'll take forever. Mm-hmm. But the and uncertainty of it and the silence of it all. And just one more reason why I don't want them to go back because if the news reports are true and that the two of them heard that they were fired from television and people frantically texting them then, like, that, the amount of disrespect that that yes. shows. We like, didn't even mention that. <laughs> like, after that day, that fateful day of August 3rd, when they reported that, uh, no, wait, I'm oh, not sorry. August 3rd. Not the, August 3rd. September 13th. Uh, September 13th, where they said, where Cube stated that they were both kicked out of the group. Hyanna and Edon found that out from news reports and being texted by friends who had seen news reports. So, like, the fact that the Cube said, we're letting you go because we can't trust you, but we're not going to tell you directly. Tell like, you your face. What kind yeah. of trust is that? Like, what kind of trust can the artist possibly have with their company that won't even tell them to their face that they're fired? Yeah. And, like, uh, Cuba's done some shady shit before. I just, like, want to get this out of here. Like, one of the sad things that people bring up a lot is that, like, in the case of Four Minute, mm-hmm. they brought every member in separately they brought Yana in first and they like told her like, here's a new contract, like sign it. Like, we love you. Like three solo albums and like more, whatever. And they just like buttered up Yana and got her to sign her contract. The other four came in and they were like, you're fired. And they didn't tell Yana, like they fired the other four and like, they were like, the group's disbanding. You're done. And she didn't know it. They like, they were, they renewed her contract and booted the others. And then with, like, Beast, they kicked out all of Beast because they were like, this guy doesn't like you anymore. And they kicked out all of Beast, and then they kept that guy in the fucking basement! Yeah. So what's really crazy about this pattern is it's very clear that Cube does not care about the personal well-being of their artists because they have, like, with the example of Hyanna and also the example of Beast... They or excuse me, I meant four minute and beast. Like they clearly didn't care about the relationships between the members themselves yeah. because they just burn those bridges for Hyanna. Like yeah. they don't. They make it seem like she is just leaving the members behind. They don't give her an opportunity to discuss it. They don't give any of the members an opportunity to decide together. Like. I'm, I wonder what would have happened if they had said, Hyanna, we want to keep you, but we don't want to keep four minute. Like, what would she have decided? Or the idea that, like, now all of these other members, they probably think Hyanna's a bitch for, and like, they selling do, them And they out. say on TV they don't speak to her anymore. Yeah, like, they ruined all of those relationships. And, like, maybe they weren't best friends in the first place. I don't know. I don't know anything about four minute. But, like, the, the way that Cube dictates the member relationships without the member's input, it's really shitty. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I feel like all of Cube's artists, G Idol, CLC, Pentagon, and Channel, like B2B, like they all need to leave. I know. They all deserve it's better. It's terrible. It's just terrible. I then that and like that's more my biggest I, I don't know. Every it's all very sad because I do I do care very deeply about the other eight and nine members of Pentagon. Like yes, I other do, nine, other nine. 
because, again, Yenon keeps getting forgotten. And it really, like, back to that and just, like, this way, back to this, like, foreign idols being treated poorly. Like, it honest to God just seems like in the cyn- like most cynical way that they just, like, are getting Chinese artists to, like, do two comebacks with them and then just ship them to China and wait for them to get famous. And, like, they don't care about them being part of the groups that they debut with. It's really fucked up. With the exception, I mean, June and Ming Hao are, like, very much an integral part of Seventeen. And, like, I don't think Seventeen would do a comeback without either of them. <laughs> Knock on wood. But, like, for example, the Seventeen came out with uh, Oh My while June and Ming Hao were on this Chinese show. Mm-hmm. June and Ming Hao were at KCON LA at which point they immediately went back and, mm-hmm. like, c- continued filming this show. And then as soon as the show ended, they immediately went onto their Ideal Cut World Tour. Which, like, that's where yeah. they are right now. That tour started after they did their shows in Korea, started in China, because Jun and Ming Hao were already in China. Yeah. So it's, like, it do- it's not impossible to take into consideration the schedules of every member. And I'm mad at Cube that they're, like, making me defend people being overworked like that. Like, hey, it's possible. Like, I ah, know. God damn it. Like, how dare you <laughs> make me defend the fact that poor Jun and Ming Hao have had to literally fly all over the world within the span of, like, a few weeks. For some dumb show sponsored by Pepsi, who cares? Yeah, Pepsi, which they don't even like to drink. There's a hilarious gif of June literally taking a sip of Pepsi on the show and then saying, is there any Coke? (laughs) Oh, and also June and Mingao immediately after finishing the show released ACF for Coca-Cola. Oh, good. Good for them. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Is there anything else that we – I feel like I'm forgetting things and if I stop the recording, I'll be like, wait, I didn't yell about this. I don't know. I just want June and Yanan to be married and in love. And I hope that Yanan is, like I said, in his mother's arms being fed soup. <sighs> I know. Or backstage at a 17 show waiting for his beautiful boyfriend <laughs> to come back and comfort him. <laughs> oh, They're so no. cute. They're so cute together. Morning. We're shipping now part of Ask Me About K-Pop. Whatever. I'm just the poor. I just love is love. I know. I know. I know. And there's just like a real, I don't know. I really want you guys to watch the episode. Um, Wait, I'm going (laughs) to, please do yourselves a favor. Go to YouTube, type in CYZJ subs and watch episode six. No, excuse me. (laughs) <laughs> episodes seven and eight. Okay. Because those are the ones when Yanan comes back and they do that like beautiful performance, which they collaborate with like a very famous Chinese singer. And the way that, first of all, Yanan showers June with gifts uh-huh. as soon as he comes back. And also like June is such, he's a confident gay panicked het because yes. he literally panics when he meets the girl that they uh-huh. collaborate with. And it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. (laughs) Cool. I thought this episode was going to be like 30 minutes. Yeah, me too. But oops, so you're getting a lot of feelings. No, I have a lot of feelings too. And again, I feel like I'm forgetting some feelings and I like don't know what to say. But I guess like, I don't know. I guess I just want, at this point, I like just want answers, which is like coming back to how I felt when I initially got the news from you that like they'd been kicked out. Like I said, okay, fine. Like now I can go back. I even specifically said like now I can go back to like enjoying Pentagon at a normal amount because if, if they just, if I just know for a fact that there's only nine of them now, like, okay, Mm -hmm. I can cope with that. Right. It's like the EXO thing of like, if you would just tell me that Lei isn't in the group anymore, then I wouldn't have this like weird knot in my stomach when I am anticipating the comeback, which at this point is just going to be a Schumann goodbye stage because like, hello, it is September now. I know. God damn it, EXO. Everyone is disappointing me. So I just want to say... Thank you, God Seven, for saving this week. <gasps> oh, God Seven. <laughs> I've been waking up every day since that song came out with it stuck in my head, and I am not complaining. 
Yeah. So at least I had got seven to concentrate on this week because all of this shit is making me really, really sad. And I know that it's like not going to end because like Cube's whole like pattern with Pentagon is they come back like four times a year and they promote for a month. Like it, this is just like not going to end. And it's, it makes me sad and I'm just like worried about them. But like maybe I shouldn't be worried about them. Like maybe I don't know them at all. Maybe they don't like him. Maybe they were happy that this is gone. Like I don't you know. know we that's don't not true. know. That's I, impossible. I don't know. I Maybe I need to tell. I would rather they all hate him and they don't want him around than to well, have to think about how terrible this is. I would just like to point out that uh, our sweet, beautiful Yanan on August 8th posted on his Weibo a picture that said uh like i don't remember what it was like 10 5 plus 5 it's equals 1 10, equals 10 whatever, yeah. 10 equals 1 yeah so he posted that on the 8th in and then support he got, of edon and he got pulled for, and then everybody there was there was rumors that like he got pulled from stuff for doing that which is like well, probably I, being too dramatic, but like whatever. He still supported his brother. No, he did. I know. I know. I just like I can't think about like we. I get like very, very, very upset. I know. But then again, like I just want to know where they are. Like if you mm-hmm. told me that like he is still in the dorm and they come home every night and he's still there and like everyone like then maybe I would feel better. Or like, like, I don't know. I just like, don't like that. I don't know where anyone is and how they are doing. I just don't like it. I know. It pumps me out and makes me sad. Uh, okay. I guess there's nothing else to say except that I like hope that something worse hasn't happened by the time that I put this out. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I hope that we hear something, some confirmation of literally anything mm-hmm. soon. I hope that Edan and Hyanna are happy for all of their days. And I hope that Yanan and June are also happy <laughs> for, for all, all of their, their days. days. Uh, okay, I think we can leave it at that. Uh, thanks for listening to this. If you listened to this, we just wanted to get it all out before anything changes too much because this has sure been a roller coaster. Um, and we yeah. will be back on Wednesday with a regularly scheduled episode yes. about all of the girl groups that have debuted in. No, wait. Sure. Okay. All <laughs> of the girl groups that have debuted in 2018. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. We'll see y'all then. Bye. Bye. Chongyun, you're in.